These two great leaders of the world in Middle East are doing their best for a remarkable achievement and a significant step forward for peace in Middle East. President Anwar Sadat of Egypt had been assassinated in 1981, and Prime Minister Hitchak Rabin was also assassinated in 1995. Their quest for peace cost them their lives, and here are their stories. Muhammad Anwar El Sadat was an Egyptian politician who served as the third president of Egypt from 15 October 1970 until his assassination by the fundamentalist army officer on October 6, 1981. Earlier in Sadat's presidency, Islamists had benefited from the rectification revolution and the release from prison of activists jailed under former President Gamal Abdel Nasser. But his Sinai Treaty with Israel enraged the Islamists, particularly the radical Egyptian Islamic Jihad. According to the interviews and information gathered by journalist Lawrence Wright, the group was recruiting military officers and accumulating weapons, waiting for the right moment to launch a complete overthrow of the existing order in Egypt. Chief strategist El Jihad was aboard Al Jumar, a colonel in military intelligence, whose plan was to kill the man leaders of the country. His plan was to capture the headquarters of the army and the state security, the telephone exchange building, and of course the radio television building, where the news of the Islamic revolution would then be broadcast. And he expected an uprising against the secular authority all over the country. In February of 1981, Egyptian authorities were alerted to El Jihad's plan by arrest of many operatives carrying a crucial information in September. Sadat ordered a highly unpopular runout of more than 1,500 people, including many Jihad members, including some clergy and intellectuals and activists of all ideological stripe. An all non government press and newspaper was banned as well. The run-up makes a jihad cell in military led by Lieutenant Khalid Islambuli who will succeed in assassinating Anwar Sadat that October. On October 6, 1981, a victory party was held in Cairo to commemorate the 8th anniversary of Egypt's crossing the Suez Canal. Sadat was protected by four layers of security and eight bodyguards, and the army parade should have been saved due to ammunition seizure rolls. As Egyptian Air Force jets flew overhead distracting the crowd, Egyptian army soldiers and troops struck towing artillery paraded by. One truck contained the assassination squad led by Lieutenant Khalid Islambuli. As it passed the Tribune, Islambuli forced the driver at gunpoint to stop. From there, the assassins dismounted and Islambuli approached Sadat with three hand grenades counseled under his helmet, only one of which exploded but fell short. An additional assassin rose from the truck indiscriminately firing AK-47 assault rifle into the stands until they had exhausted their ammunition. Sadat was airlifted to a military hospital where 11 doctors operated him. He died nearly two hours after he was taken to the hospital. Sadat's death was a tribute to the violent nervous shock and eternal bleeding in the chest due to the gun wounds. Today, the people of the United States join with the people of Egypt and all those who long for a better world in mourning the death of Anwar Sadat. President Sadat was a courageous man whose vision and wisdom brought nations and people together. In a world filled with hatred, he was a man of hope. In a world trapped in the animosities of the past, he was a man of foresight, a man who sought to... Yitzhak was born on March 1, 1922 and died in November 4, 1995. He was an Israeli politician, statesman, and general. He was the fifth Prime Minister of Israel, serving two terms in office from 1974 to 1977 and 1992 until his assassination in 1995. On July 25, 1993, after Hezbollah fired rockets into the northern Israel, 
that have been authorized a week-long military operation in Lebanon. Local public radio reported that several people have been injured. September 13, 1993. Rabin played a leading role in signing the Oslo Accords, which created the Palestine National Authority and granted it partial control over the parts of Gaza Strip and West Bank. Prior to the signing of the Accords, Rabin received a letter from PLO Chairman Yasser Arafat renouncing violence and officially recognizing Israel, and at the same day of September 9, 1993, Rabin sent Arafat a letter officially recognizing the PLO. After the announcement of the Oslo Accord, there were many protesters and demonstrations in Israel objecting to the Accords. As this protest dragged on, Rabin insisted that as long as he had majority in the Knesset, he would ignore the protest and the protesters. In this context, he said, they the protester can spin around and around like a pillars, but he would continue to the path of the Oslo Accords. Rabin's parliamentary majority rested on a non-coalition members of Arab support. Rabin also denied that the right of American Jews to object to his plan for peace, calling any such dissent as chutzpa. The Oslo Agreement was also opposed by Hamas on the other Palestinian faction, which slammed a suicide bombing at Israel. After the historical handshake with Yasser Arafat, Rabin said on behalf of the Israel people, We who have fought against you, the Palestines, we say to you today in a loud and a clear voice, Enough of blood and tears, enough. During his term of office, Rabin also oversaw the signing of the Israel Jordan Peace Treaty in 1994. On the evening of November 4, 1995, Rabin was assassinated by Yigal Amir, a right-wing extremist who opposed the signing of the Oslo Accords. Rabin had been attending a mass rally at the Kings of Israel Square in Tel Aviv, held in support of the Oslo Accords. When the rally ended, Rabin walked down the city step toward the open door of his car, at which point Amir fired three shots at Rabin with a semi-automatic pistol. Two shots hit Rabin and the third lightly injured Yuram Rabin, one of Rabin's bodyguards. Rabin was taken to the hospital where he died at the operating table less than 40 minutes later due to the blood loss and punctured lungs. Amer was immediately seized by Rabin's bodyguard. He was later tried, found guilty, and sentenced to life imprisonment. For half a century, Yitzhak Rabin risked his life to defend his country. Today, he gave his life to bring it a lasting peace. His last act, his last words, were in defense of that peace he did so much to create. Peace must be, and peace will be, Prime Minister Rabin's lasting legacy. Tonight, the land for which he gave his life is in mourning. But I want the world to remember what Prime Minister Rabin said here at the White House barely one month ago. And I quote, we should not let the land flowing with milk and honey become a land flowing with blood and tears. Don't let it happen. Rabin's assassination came as a great shock to the Israeli public and mass of the rest of the world. Hundreds of thousands of Israelis thrown to the square where Rabin was assassinated to mourn his death. Young people in particular 
turn out in the large number lighting memorial candles and singing his song.